Okay, there's an option. It's like the, I think it's 45 cents. Now, a small price to pay to make sure that you know the right person is signing your contract. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is particularly true in the case where either the same email account can log in at the home. If you wouldn't mind, I'm sorry. Um, if the same email address or they're using the same computer at the house. You want to make sure that one person's not signing the other because that just spells lawsuit all over. So what you do is you click that option, you give it whatever password you want to give it, and then you call that person. Make sure you hear their voice or you tell them in person. And you say, hey, here's your password. Use this whenever you log into the account. And that way I know it's you signing this and not the other person. And I'm not saying they're going to have bad intentions, but what if they do? You know, you just want to make sure you're protected. So anyway, not many people know that you can use that option. And this is only going to be true whenever you're going through something like that where you're just afraid that something like that might happen. You don't need to use that in every transaction. Thank you very much. Feels so much better. Okay. So anyway, um, this is our little promo piece here. But, you know, we would obviously love to have your next transaction, but whatever title company you use, we hope it's us, CC in your title company at the end and you don't have to send them a copy of the contract. How awesome is that? Many people think that oh, I don't want to I don't want to do that. I, I'm not comfortable with that. It works. What you do? Steps one, two, three, four, five, six, or we did the one, two, two, three, four, four, five, or whatever it was. Um, and then at the very end, this is the listing agent, and then this is us as awesome closing company. Um, then you're going to have your title company's email address, and then you're just going to have them receive a copy via email, and then you're done. I mean, there. Are, this is, happens all the time. We use DocuSign. I mean, there. I mean, I'm pretty. I don't know if any title company that doesn't use DocuSign to receive emails. So whatever you use, even though we hope it's. Ask the other agent if you wanted to do that. I mean, we have a I mean, if, as long as you've agreed on the title company. If you can go ahead and put the title company down so it'll go from the last person that gets it, and he'll get a copy of it too. Well, by that time, it's already done. 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 Yeah. The title company's already designated and everything, I would think. Now, if the title company's not designated, that might be a problem. Yeah. Like, oh, I already docu-signed it. My bad. We're using them. <laughs> so, anyway. I have one quick question. Yes, about absolutely. Action. I don't think I've ever gone in and said anything about action. Yeah. It's always signing, but the receiving a copy thing is what I... Where do you go to click yeah. on it? Where do you go to say sense. send the it, change that? It, it should be when you're setting the recipients and routing, you should see the order, the email, the name, and the act. It should be columned like this. It might look different on your computer or your laptop. Let's get together. I'll make sure I'll show it to you before we leave. Okay. Okay. How do they get a copy of it? I mean, I know it's on their computer and they sign it, but can they print it from right from their computer to sure. make a copy for themselves? Sure. After they've signed it. Absolutely. I got it. It, it prompts them to do that. Oh, gotcha. Well, it prompts them to save. Well, see, I've never received one. Well, you, it said, I think it either says save or print, but if it doesn't say print, okay. Well, then I would recommend to say, hey, print a copy for your records. Yeah. The reason I say that is I've never, um, I've never had to do that. You know, I mean, I've sent them, but I've never. Make a I've never had one sent to me to see what the procedure is and how to do it. And that's what I was saying. A lot of agents don't because they've never been on the back end. And they'll call me and ask me what to do, and I'll say, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's a good answer to have. <laughs> Please hold. Here's my assistant. <laughs> so anyway, and then obviously on the right-hand side, those X's, I don't want to state the obvious, but that's if you want to eliminate one of those. So if you've maybe... Um, if you've maybe, you know, just added one too many people or you've messed up, just delete it. And then also, here's a little keyboard shortcut here. This is universal. Does anybody know what those little dots mean? This is a universal little emblem that nobody really knows. That means you can drag and drop the order. That means you don't have to type it. So this is particularly awesome for your iPad. Um, so if you're like, oh, snap, I forgot to put the buyer's agent at 3, I have it at 6. So you can just go drag, boom, done. Oh, snap. <laughs> I blame my mother. She started saying it, and I just kind of caught on. So it's not exactly the most masculine thing to say, snap. Absolutely. It, it, okay, let me go back. Um, okay, I, I cut off the bottom part, but basically at the bottom, it's going to either say 
uh, send or review. There's going to be a, a, a button you click at the bottom, but until that time, review it, make sure it's in the proper order. Just because you've added these in the right order doesn't mean that you can't change it. You can change the order it's still on the screen from here. So you don't have to delete the whole thing and start over. You can drag and drop or you can switch them around by rank. Either way, it'll do the same thing. Because once you click that rank, these these six dots right here, or eight dots, you see those right there? They're kind of hard to see. Yeah, I see them. Well, it's hard to see on this screen. It's really far away. But on your laptop, it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but anyway, okay, let's say right here, let's say, uh, let me, let's say you want to put the buyer's agent for number one for some reason. And I'm not, you probably never do that. But let's say you want to. Um, so you can either drag and drop there, and then it'll automatically change the order from three to one. It'll go one, two, three. It'll automatically change it. Or you can change the number. You can say number one, and then you can change this to two, and then you can change that to three. But that's, that's like three more clicks. Who wants to do that? So anyway, I'm just showing you tricks to make this a little bit easier so that you're not spending time. When, um, we don't need to add ourselves there to that because it's automatically going to send it back to us when they're done, right? It's a good question. That's a great question, actually. What I would do is I would still add yourself. And here's why. That certificate of completion page is only going to show the recipients that were sent to and when those were completed. So let's say, hypothetically, in a terrible situation, something goes wrong in the transaction, and then you've got to send this to track or whoever you may need to to prove that everything was done accordingly. You're not going to be on that list. So they're going to ask you, when did you receive a copy? When did you print it? When did you save it? That certificate of completion page is going to show exactly when you received it and what you did with it. Uh, so you should add yourself. I would like always. Three it's a safeguard. Say receive a copy. It's a safeguard. But then you get two, but only one will log on. One will show on your completion page. Because I'm going to get it anyway. You're going to get it, and it's going to say that they've completed it in an email. Um, and then it'll, you'll, you, Actually, I'd recommend it just because you'll see what it's like to receive it on the back end. That way you'll be like, oh, this is what it looks like when my lender receives a copy or my title company receives a copy. So what number would you... I did it at the very end. I mean, yeah, I mean, here's the buyer's agent, here's the listing agent. Um, yeah, I would just do it at the very end or right before your, your title company. So when you do the ACC, you could send it to your mortgage person or whatever? Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. I have a question because I don't understand this. Okay. I've been working in transactions with my buyers in Hawaii. Okay. And I've never had this happen before. But every time I would send it to them, they were saying they could not open it. Okay. If I went in and I put myself as number one. Okay. And so I go in and sign my little area. Okay. They had no problem with it. Was there a person before them on? No. That's odd. No, it's very odd. Now, when to say that again. And I've never, they, and I, I, I've talked it up to, you know, technological error because the, the husband and wife are using the same account and there sure. are other issues there. But finally, because we've had this thing going back and forth so many times, I just would go to put myself as number one. Mm -hmm. add me and I'd put me number one. And, you know, once once it went through with me, it seemed like they didn't have any problems. But if I would just send it with them as one and two. Was that the only transaction that's happened on? Uh-huh. Okay. And so I didn't know if it's, you know, the communication once it gets off, off the mainland or... or I mean, I have... I, I've just never had that happen before. I've had a real estate agent. Well, that's a different one. I've had a real estate agent that gets people to sign in Greece and, you know. I've done international many see? times. Right. And it's, it's not been a problem. So this one is just really kind of throwing you a This one's in the United I, States. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I've never heard of that problem before. If it still bugs you, uh, I do want to tell everyone this. And I, um, I'm one of those people that I scream at the phone once I've been on the phone for three hours in customer service and I don't like it. Um, DocuSign has an absolutely outstanding customer service. I don't know if, how many of you have ever had to call them. They're amazing. They answer quickly. It's a human, and I think they're in America, which is which is pretty nice. Um, 
Uh, I can get you the number, absolutely. I don't have it on me. But they're amazing. I had an agent that I was trying to sign in. We were basically creating his account. We were doing all that. Basically, they didn't recognize his NAR number, even though he knew it was right. And um, so we, and he had a meeting in 15 minutes. So I called. They said, oh, here's the problem. Here you go. Let's walk you through it. I'll go ahead and build this. You're good. Here you go. Here you sign in. You're done. And it took literally five minutes. So they have amazing customer service. If you ever have to call them, I recommend it. I don't, I don't know why that happened, and I can probably research I definitely can research it for you. But as far as if you're still curious and I can't find the answer, they do have a good customer service, and they can probably knock it out for you. So I don't want to just refer you to customer service. We have to make something work. Absolutely. I mean, you have to. So. Okay, so uh, again, here's all the actions you want each recipient to take, and here's all your options. Uh, so up there in the top right-hand corner, you can see the action sign, sign, receive a copy, sign, sign, receive a copy. Those are the two options that we saw up there, right? Sign. The recipient must sign the document. Sign in person. The recipient will electronically sign the document in your presence. So this is nice. So if you are going, you, you can set that. Um, if you don't want somebody to say, you know, okay, for example, you have clients and you don't want them to sign it until you get there. You send it and then you say, hey, uh, I'm going to come over tonight. We're going to have some food and we'll just kind of sign this, no big deal. Um, that's the one you would pick. Acknowledge receipt. The recipient will be prompted to acknowledge they received the documents but does not need to sign or date anything. Okay? Has anybody ever had to, ever wanted to use a feature like that? I don't think it's very common, but it is an option if you want it. Uh, receive a copy. The, receive, the recipient will receive a carbon copy of the document. Address recipient. The recipient will add signers to the envelope. Okay, so that's one option that you have. Whenever your agent doesn't want to give you the email addresses or doesn't want you to contact their clients directly, you can click the option address recipient where they can forward it on to their clients. Or manage envelope. This gives the recipient the same control over the folders as the sender. The same control that you have. If it's the address is stripped, the only thing they can do is add recipients. The signatures for those recipients. They can't change any of the document data in the document. No. Right? No. They can only add signers. Okay. So let me rephrase. I forgot that. When you want to if you have a, uh, a real estate agent, and who's ever had this happen? This was like one agent that told me that. Anybody that said uh, they were working with an agent and they said, I don't want you to contact my clients directly through DocuSign. Nobody? Okay, all right, well then you're probably never gonna use this, but just in case you need to, click the re address recipient. Don't click manage envelope. I forgot about this one. I thought there was one, but I didn't want to well, stick my foot in my mouth. Really? And which makes it very uncomfortable, especially, you know, I had multiple offers. And from the listing agent standpoint, it takes a lot more time to go in there because they're not sending you something that you can look at, you know, forward and you're negotiating multiple offers. Sure. And what's really uncomfortable is when you get that thing, you know, the way it's set up, you have to sign it. And figured out a way to do it without signing it, and that was to do the download. But um, it's still, I was going to recommend that. Still is an extra step, and it if is. you're out in the field, it is. Um, you know, I I just don't like that policy that some of the offices are having. So I had an agent though that she didn't have um, my email, the cl my client's email. She was out and about, so she just did hers, and then she. CC'd me, so then I could just, I got it when they signed it, and then I forwarded it on, and I was like, how did she do that? I wonder how, so that makes sense, but right. well, that's, if, that's they're, if they're, they're out got about, an agreement, but when you just have that initial offer coming in, it's right. Really right. right. Now let me explain, verbally. let me explain why that is. Everyone knows ExxonMobil's building right down the road, right? Did anybody know that there's not going to be one printer in that entire facility? It's going to be completely paperless. The ExxonMobil oh, okay. office. Um, now, I've heard that that was true, and I'm sure it's true to an extent, because <laughs> I can't imagine the largest oil company in the world not having any paper at one of the corporate offices. But I can, I can tell you this, more and more companies are going green completely to save paper. I understand 
that agents go through a lot of paper a year. It has a lot to do with legalities to make sure everything's right, to make sure everything is certified and documented. I get that. It's, it's a necessary process. But I also understand that probably I can only guess how much paper this office goes through a year just because it's necessary. Now, you're starting to see more and more offices doc or only use DocuSign for that purpose. Um, the only way that I would um, tell you to counter that is to download it and print it. That's going to be easier for you. Now, if you're not at the office, it's just tough. Well, you can download it and, say it and then print it if you want to. If you want to lay it out in front and then say this one's this, this one's that, this one's this, especially for your clients that are going to see that more of an easy format. Can you upload PDFs to BackAgent? You don't have to print it. So I would print it if you can. If that's easier for you, um, that's going to be the way it is. But you're going to start seeing more and more offices adopting DocuSign. I don't think Kelly Williams uses DocuSign. They use something else. Yeah, they do. They use the um, E-Edge. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, that's their suite. They have, they have a different signing, electronic signing. Right. Dot loop. loop is their electronic signature mm -hmm. program. Now, the reason they're, uh, I, I've talked to a lot of Kelly Williams agents, and some of them are still using DocuSign, but they just have an extra step. They have to upload it to dot loop, and it's not as easy. But um, some people prefer DocuSign. Some people prefer EEDGE. Some people use Zipfire. Anyway, so uh, off topic. Point is, if some offices are only going to use DocuSign, and only send offers electronically, you're probably going to see that more and more. So um, if I were you, I would say before they even send it, just say, hey, are you going to send this via DocuSign or are you going to send this this? And that way you know if you want to print it off at the office or what it may be so that you have everything in the same format when you present to your clients. I mean, that's, does that answer your question? I mean, basically the answer that I have for you is that it, it just kind of stinks. Cause well, it, well, it does because you get that and they want your signature right away with once you put signatures on, you know, you have a contract. So when you sign it, does that mean you've accepted the contract? Well, the, mm -hmm. way, the way it comes across, you know, it asks you to accept this DocuSign. Does that make sense? Let me look into that for you. I think what that means, and putting a signature on anything is... They got it in the email. I think that what it means is that they've confirmed that you've received the email. However, that does make me nervous oh, that they're asking for your signature. So just, I mean, if, I mean, there's a red receipt. They don't need a signature for for you to see that, for them to see that you've received the email. It's very uncomfortable, and especially when sure. the market that we have right now with multiple offers, well, any offer, because it's still an offer. It's not, you know, it's not a contract. No, it's not. You you want to review it. I mean, you talk to the agents, and you've got all those little particulars ironed out. Sure. Still the offer, and they've got a part for. You know, signature to sign the thing, and that's got a part for you to sign, and that a part for yourself to sign. Yeah, if you if you set it up. No, no, no. But so the other agent when they send it to you, yeah. does it have a place for the seller to sign? Oh yeah, you have to go and put their email. But it's got that. But it's got the way it comes across when you first see it. It looks like you can't even get that offer. I, it took me a little while to figure out how I was going to get this offer without sure. signing it. Sure. Because I didn't want to accept something, and then I've accepted, or I've put my, my seller in some sort of... Are they of sending separate. the offer to you through DocuSign? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want it that way. Well, that's the only well, way you're going to Why can't you just open it up as a PDF? I think I'm not going to I want it that. through email, and then we can negotiate. I had to do a download. Yeah, I figured I out I could do the little Dropbox yeah, download and then save it as a PDF yeah, without just, going in there. Uh, the situation is when you receive a DocuSign document and you accept it, all that means is it showed up in your inbox. Yes. You're not going to sign that until you literally click on the sign option and select your signature and put it there. So yeah, you can yeah. just print it, can't so, you, without signing it? Yeah, you don't I, have I, to print it. You don't <laughs> have to print it. Just when you open it, the, the acceptance, it, open it, that doesn't sign it automatically. You have to click the individual spots in the document to sign. There's not, I don't even think there's a one-click button for you to sign the entire document. So it does make me uncomfortable with that they're asking for a signature. But 
I am almost 100% mean, I guarantee, you know what that means? That means that they're using a really secure system to make sure that it's you that's opening the document. So there's never going to be a one click button to sign a contract. So if, it ever, if you ever feel that way, you have to go through and you have to click page two, click page three, click page four, initial, page five, sign. There's never going to be a one click button. And you could call DocuSign and give them the document information and they could look at it and tell you. Yeah, that. yeah, absolutely. They could probably tell you exactly. So if you're still uncomfortable, you or not. yes, I, if you're still uncomfortable, Take us out of word, out of our word. It's never going to be that way. But if you're still uncomfortable when you get that document, and you just want to make sure, and there's nothing wrong with that, because I'm the same way. Call DocuSign. Tell them, hey, this is the this is the number that I have for this document. I want to make sure that when I click and I sign this right here, I'm not binding myself to anything other than the fact that I've just received it. And they'll do it. Yeah. Because it does sound weird. It yeah. sounds like you've got an overly compulsive person on the other end who wants to make sure that you actually got her offer rather than having one of those realtors that never responds or says they didn't mm -hmm. get it. I wish I could be that blatant, yeah. but that's what I wanted to say. Anyway, so, uh, but that's the point. So they're probably just doing it for more secure reasons, but anyway. But it takes, as an agent, it takes you a lot more time to go in and get that offer. Okay. Especially when you're sitting with two or three other offers. Sure. Oh, yeah. You know, that happens. It's understandable. It's out of control compulsion on um, anyway, so uh, you can change the action to address recipient to allow someone else to add signer's information. Um, you can choose how many roles you wish for the recipient to add. The roles will appear in your routing. So if you don't want them to add more than two, then you can click that as well. So anyway, you'll click roll one, roll two. And that's all pretty laid out if y'all have any questions about that. I don't have anything more on this slide about it. I'll just have to show you one-on-one. -on -one. But basically, when you say address recipients, um, it's going to, you click it right there, address recipients, and then you click roll seven, okay? You add, and then you add another one. You just click roll one, roll two, and then that way, once the listing agent receives this, their action dictates that they can add recipients. So these two slots will be how many people that they can add. So if you add one more and you have rule three, then they can add three recipients. So you can dictate only, or you can dictate exactly how many people you want to add to sign this document. Make sense? Anybody have questions on that? And that's where you put the title company or the lender? No, this would be after that. So, um, well, would that be where you'd like to maybe use it for uh, trusts? Yeah. Like if there's more Where you signers. have a name, then you buy and all that. Sure. I mean, whatever. Complicated. Yeah, absolutely. That that's definitely a situation. Any situation that y'all can think of where you can use this portion. Um, now, just keep in mind: once you dictate how many people, um, you can go in after and add people, but it's not as easy as doing it initially. So make sure, just, just food for thought. Just say, hey, how many people are you going to be adding to sign this document? Because I'm putting the roles in right now, and it's more of a pain. It's a lot easier to do this right now, so I don't have to go back and do it. So just, just ask ahead of time. What about, um, oftentimes we're going through <coughs> a contract and, you know, maybe you're the listing agent and you've done this listing and everything is fine, and then, you know, you're into getting the offer and getting, getting the contract, and all of a sudden one of the people says, oh, well, I have another email address. You know, it says send it here, or send it to my office and they give you another address that you don't have initially? I believe... Is that a problem? I believe you can go back and change the email address. But I'll have to get back to you on that as well. I think, I think you can go back and change the email. Has anybody... I, I just, I've never... I, I only know questions. I, you know, I haven't never done this, so I don't have a DocuSign account. But has anybody ever had to change an email address in DocuSign? Yeah. Can you do it? You can do it, but... The, the problem is I had to, you know, I had a person using three names and then he wanted me to send an email to another address, email address he had. And it would keep going back to the original email. So I had to take one of the names out. I had, and, you know, it wasn't the, the primary document. It looked like an amendment document. 
And so that's what I did. I, I just used two of his names, and then it took it. But to use the full, you know, first, middle, last name, right? it would keep reverting back to the original email. Right. You have to have separate names. It's not going to allow you to... I don't think it's going to allow you to enter the same name twice. Even though the email address is different. Right. Yeah, it was, it was kind of tricky to try to do what he wanted. Finagle it. Yeah. So, but as long as you're able, I mean, there's no clear-cut way to figure out, you know, that kind of transaction. Um, it's just you're going to have to finagle it a little way. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can add a middle name. Um, I don't think changing the action will change that. So if you add like a middle name, a middle name initial, either way, any of those, it's gonna you're gonna be able to do whatever he wants. But um, using the same name, I don't think will work. So, so right. So, sure. So if, if you, we're on the receiving end of a contract, sure. an offer, sure. Okay, and we do not, we're not given administrator privileges. Sure. And we want to counter that offer. Yes. Okay, we don't have the ability to go in and change provisions or price. Correct. Right? So is it possible to save that offer contract as a PDF, then re-upload it into DocuSign and change the fields because now we are the administrator and then send it back with the, revi with the revisions? I'm not sure. I don't know why you couldn't. I don't know why you couldn't either. The only thing that... Can go to the data field box? Yes, that's exactly right. I'm pretty sure you could. The only thing that would get me is... Once you go to print it, it's going to have the original price on there. So I don't know if you could erase that first part. Oh, I didn't... I didn't Oh, oh, you mean when you save it as a PDF? It's yes, gonna it's going to save that original price on there, and then when you upload it to DocuSign, I don't know <laughs> if it's going to. You see what I'm saying? When you have that little I, I, that I price it. field on there, that yeah, box, it's you're going to write that price in there. Yeah. Now, once it saves as the PDF version, I don't know if it's going to white out what was behind it and then insert a new price on top, or if that is just there for a template purpose. And then once you put that price on there, it's just going to merge and it's going to have like turn a three into an eight. So is the intent when an offer is received that any negotiation <coughs> occurs verbally and then yes. the originating agent goes in and changes the provisions to what's been negotiated? I mean, that's... So you that one page. And that's, so is that, is that the process that should be followed? That's the easiest process, to be honest with you. I mean, I've seen people, I mean, when they've had to negotiate over DocuSign, but I've heard of more problems than anything. I mean, there's a couple agents, uh, Amy, uh, Amy Smith-Harris, completely virtual realtor. She negotiates over DocuSign sometimes, but it's only with people that are comfortable enough doing it or who have used DocuSign to know all the ins and outs of the program completely to do it. Now, not to say you can't get there, but it's easier to just give her a call and say, hey, we don't agree to this and this, but we want to change it to this and this, and then she'll resend it. So um, okay. you can do it, yeah. but it's hard for... You know, if you go to the managed end of that, then you could. If you've been given it's the... Administrator yeah, privileges. If you've been given admin privileges, then yes. yes. And the reason I raise the issue is, and I'm not a broker, but I've heard brokers raise concern about... <coughs> verbal negotiations Ooh, and the good. legal liabilities they create. And so if we had a way, if we didn't have administrator privileges, but we had a way to amend the document, then we can avoid those verbal negotiations. The only thing you could do is go into uh, zip forms and redo that page and then add it to the contract and send it back to the other agent. That's the only way you could do yeah. it. That's another option too. And that's, and I'm going to show you how to integrate zip forms with DocuSign so that that is an easy process for you to do. You click it and it automatically, basically it's going to skip the step in this process. Uh, the first step before you add recipients is uploading a document. Y'all have seen that part, right? It skips that over. So once you send a document into zip forms, or sorry, a document from zip forms into DocuSign, you're just skipping that step because you already have your documents. So and I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Yes. Okay. So here you're going to add emails viewed by all recipients. The first one is viewed by all recipients. Um, who here has used this part to email their clients? I have. So yeah, a lot of, about 50-50. Okay. Um, now, 
a lot of people are skeptical to use this because they don't know who's getting what. The first one is you're going to email the message. Okay, always edit the subject to, of email to all recipients, even if you're not sending an email message. Um, basically, just customize it so that way they don't ever get something and it looks weird in their subject field. Um, because if somebody got a uh, email and it said uh, email to all recipients, then they might think that's spam. So just kind of take that into account. So email subject to all recipients. See that it's going to say it in bold letters. So if you're ever question, or sorry, if you ever question who it's going to, that's who it's going to right there. <laughs> Click subject. So this one would be hey. I've sent a uh, email out, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here we go, right here. That's, that's it, blank right there. Please sign these documents, one, two, three, four, happy lane. Email message to all recipients. Good afternoon, attached, you'll find. Upon agreeing to do business with me, you'll be given instructions on how to digitally sign the documents. Please call me if you have any questions at cell phone number. Okay, or email me or whatever it, the process is. Um, now. Here, you'll add a note, which is basically the same email, but they're going to get a specific note within that email that's tailored specifically to them. So you could theoretically, let's say buyer one, buyer two, seller one, seller two. I send the email out. The one before, y'all are all going to get this. And then, Batteries are going out on this. I had a note to you. Good afternoon. Uh, I would just want to let you know, thank you for working with us on this transaction. Here is your portion of the contract. Please sign this and let me know. Section two. Right, and then you, you, you do the same thing, to probably the same buyers, change the names if you want. And then, you know, the seller will be like, hey, we've got, we finally got a contract on this house here. You can look at it and see if you want to do it, blah, blah, blah. Tailor it specifically to each person that rece receives it. You'll add a recipient to, or add a note to this person, add a note to that person, add a note to that person, add a note to that person. So they're all going to get this email, but they're not all going to get, this is annoying, they're not all going to get this. I don't see that add a note on the screen. Where are you finding that at? All recipients, add a note to, right there. Drop down, it'll have their email address because you've uploaded their email address into there for them to sign it. So it'll just basically plug that note into whoever's receiving that email. But if she, if she uploaded a second signer, a second name would be there. If she uploaded a third signer, it would be there as well. So, make sense? Yes. Yes. If if you are doing private emails or private notes. You still have to do that all recipients one first? I believe so. I believe so. I could be wrong. Let's take a look. You don't have to fill anything in. You could just, you could do, um, you could do a subject that says, please docu-sign this document, and then leave the subject field blank on this section. And then once they get the private email, it will just be this. So that way, you could email to multiple people and it, there wouldn't be a recipient section. So the private note shows up <coughs> in the message body of the mm -hmm. last to everyone. Sure. So it's just one email. Correct. With a, a general and then a customized message. Yes, but it'll go out as separate emails depending on how many signers you have. So it's the easiest way to you know knock out how many birds with one stone. So you can just say boom, 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 and then you don't have to send email to one, email to two, email to three, whatever. Oh, sorry. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, you'll add private notes to individual recipients. So um, only tbanner at yahoo.com see this notes, and then CC in your title company and say, please call the buyer's agent when you receive this contract to pick up the earth's money. So glad we're finally to move in on this one. So this is a cool way to do it. You can do this for your lender as well. Whatever private message you want to put in there. Okay. Now, I had a I had one person explain to me something that happened with this process. So I just want to let you know, use this as a this cautionary tale. Okay, so you can send a reminder 
to the, e to the you can send a reminder email to the signer. After first reminder, send a reminder every blank days. A client sent this out to all parties and um, she did that setting specifically for a couple that were on vacation in Bermuda for two weeks and she had a reminder for every day for two weeks and people got really annoyed and they went through the entire process and they signed it and they did it but they were very annoyed they got back and like I have 14 emails and I told you I was on vacation do you not listen to what I had to say she was like oh that was a probably a bad decision use this as a cautionary okay if you want somebody to have a reminder you can I would recommend not using it because if people get annoyed by emails in their inbox all the time then they probably don't want to have the same email over and over and over and over again now if they forget call them but if they don't have time to sign it they're still going to get those emails and be like okay I, I'm gonna sign it I just don't have time to do it right now and they're gonna get annoyed so just cautionary note uh, about this option in particular so here we go here's the tagging portion of the contract this is the guts of it tags are set by you to indicate where a signer needs to sign initial or fill in data okay so note your account might not support all of the tag types listed here but these are all the sign types that you can do signature tag optional signature tag initial tag optional initial tag signer attachment tag if they need to attach anything then you prompt them right there and say please attach blank to this part of the contract hey, Dylan. yes um, I understand when we do that that they can sign they can highlight those fields and sign correct but, but if somebody is familiar with DocuSign and they're familiar with contracts is it necessary to create those tags or can you just send them the document and then on the receiving end, they can see where to sign an, an initial. Do you have to set it up on the front end is my question. I think you do have to tag it because if you don't tag it, they can't sign it. They can't. So they don't have the ability to drag and drop a signature. No, no. 